Welcome back. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the different types of tokens. And you probably have heard of tokens before, but maybe not have seen the amount of different types that are happening in the world of crypto. And I guess as an analogy, if you can think of blockchain being the river, tokens are actually the water itself. The ones that sort of run through the blockchain and are being transacted uh, minute by minute, second by second between different accounts and people. So let's look at what exactly are tokens. So tokens are digital currency. It's not any physical money uh, that we're used to as far as the world of traditional finance, uh, but completely digital, also having assigned value as the currencies do and can be traded or exchanged. You might've also heard about coins. Uh, and what are the difference between coins and tokens? Well, many of you probably would argue that there is no difference, that they can be used interchangeably but most of the time when you hear any reference to coins, it's actually referring to the kind of native token of the, the blockchain. So for instance, in Ethereum, it's ETH. Uh, while Ethereum also has different tokens that are available and can be created by uh, developers themselves. So that's probably the best and clearest way to see the differences. And there are different types of tokens. So there's utility tokens, DeFi tokens, governance tokens, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, which are probably one of the most talked about tokens in the world of Web3, and security tokens. Let's look at utility tokens first and what they do. So utility tokens normally provide access. So they either provide some sort of access to a community, a service, or a different way in for a different protocol and how to actually use it. But in this case, the token actually only provides access. It doesn't actually provide ownership of the service or product or protocol. So in, in that case, they're actually not regulated in ways for different governments to approach them uh, because it's not actually an asset. You don't owning anything um, as far as a regular or a token might have a different sort of assigned value to them. Uh, so in that case, um, we can have different use cases to use this whether it's maybe accessing to a Web3 service or actually just providing some sort of reward to users performing an action. Again, you're not owning the service or owning a, a part of the a voting, which we'll talk about in governance side of things, but you're only just using this token to get access to it. An example of this is actually the basic attention token or BAT uh, that is actually embedded in the Brave web browser, which rewards users to that are watching or viewing ads uh, so then now that they get the rewards uh, for that and can use that token for any sort of value. But again, they don't actually have any ownership within that. Now let's look at DeFi tokens. So DeFi tokens are the native tokens of DeFi applications. We'll talk next time about specifically what DeFi is, uh, but know that each sort of DeFi protocol normally has a token assigned to it uh, that allows for people to steer the protocol or get value from actually participating in the protocol itself. So holders can use this token to actually provide DeFi operations like earning interest, they can lend the token or actually invest in the protocol itself by purchasing the token. So one of the main use cases of this is lending pools. So I can actually use this token and actually commit that to a lending pool and earn some sort of interest depending on how the APY or interest rate. An actual real example of this is the Aave protocol, uh, where users can provide liquidity to different pools and be able to, once uh, users want to provide any loans, uh, they can pull from those liquidity pools and the users that provided them, so the providers, uh, actually get direct benefits from that. Next is the governance token side of things. So governance, again, is operating in the Web3 world as being very decentralized but then who and how people get to decide on the direction and voting is all done through governance tokens. So protocols, apps, DAOs, they all have, can have all the access to governance tokens because now users can direct and improve the protocol however they would like by using and holding uh, these governance tokens. So typically in a voting faction, uh, the holders with the most governance tokens have the higher influence when it comes to voting. 
Um, there are other mechanisms where we can even that out. So it's not just the riches deciding. But in one of the use cases is when we're using it, for let's, let's say within DAOs, for example, which we'll also explain further, we can use things like uh, adapting sort of certain coins, different uh, treasuries. So a DAO has a shared treasury and those can be exchanged. An example of this is the ENS, where ENS has a city protocol in itself, but also has a DAO where people who participate or have an ENS name, like the dapadan.eth, can also receive ENS governance tokens and allow them to vote on how the protocol should be changed or improved in the future. Next is non-fungible tokens or NFTs, something that may uh, probably is talked about often, but hardly understood. One is that it's a digital certific certificate. So it's providing sort of a proof of ownership of a digital asset, and the asset can it exists directly on chain or it point to the asset that exists off chain. So in this case, holders have the right to a digital or even a real world asset. So we've even seen some use cases around real estate where these are used for um, actually providing ownership of land or different real estate assets. One of the also bigger use cases is around GameFi and art. So you probably seen on Twitter, many people have uh, profile pictures or NFTs. So they directly own this and they can point to an address within the blockchain that they particularly own that particular NFT and can trade or sell within uh, other addresses or wallets or their users uh, because again, they have that proof of ownership which was just assigned to the NFT or the non-fungible token. Within GameFi, we actually have also examples like Axie Infinity. So many people commit many, many hours to leveling up and getting in-game items that are actually locked directly into the game itself. With NFTs, you can take those items and transfer them over into other games because you can, you have direct ownership in a decentralized way. So I think it provides a lot of different use cases, not only in digital assets, but again, they can also be assigned and directly pointed to for real world assets. So a very exciting space for world uh, the world of Web3. Next is security tokens. and. This is sort of the stocks and bonds of cryptos. So a holder actually can sh hold, have security tokens where they represent a share of a company or an asset. So even if you would like to uh, fractionalize, which is the concept of taking a very expensive item, let's say some piece of art in the real world, and allow people to own different pieces of them, uh, pieces of that art, not physically, but own a share of that art, uh, that they will be able to own that through security tokens. So another use case is startup fundraising, where people can actually directly earn or raise funds for their startup on chain by offering security tokens, essentially again operating as stocks within the company. And there's a real world example of this called BCAP, which is blockchain capital, where they make investments in startups and you can actually own the BCAP token, which eventually is owning shares in their, directly into their investments. So this is giving people access to venture capital or investment that has not ever have that access to because of regulations uh, or high cost. And that is really exciting. And what's something we'll actually talk about even more when we explore the world of DeFi. And that isn't for next time. See you later.